that's what's happening with that. Uh, Marisol, after you escaped the Fury, what is it that you, you were going to try to look for your friends? Is that what you were going to do? Yeah, it sounds like a pretty good game plan. Are you out in the central chamber? Oh, did we manage to get there? Yeah. Hey, uh, I think we should get to the lab. <laughs> no? Yeah, I guess that's a good idea. Although I've noticed some of these clone numbers are starting to thin out. Um, yeah, that, that is pretty weird, actually. I was thinking more so that we could blow up the ship. I mean, they'll probably survive, but, you know, minus one less ship. That's, that seems like a pretty huge resource to them. Oh, so you do want to die with me. Hmm. I'd say in the grand scheme of things, our lives are pretty expendable, Lewis. Yeah. But, I mean, I guess that's not... Look, sh shut up. We, we, we should stay focused. Also, maybe. She's, like, looking around shiftily eyed Plus, our, you know, illegal reality seahorse robots are still in there. Yeah, I guess that's true. All right. We'll make our way towards the lab, I guess. Uh, Lewis looks back at, uh, at Jim... I, I guess he's just been riding around doing the search for his pals. Yeah. Jim, uh, as you're riding through the sands, the numbers of the blank star man are starting to thin out. There's like, it started out with like a hundred. It's going down to like 20 or so. Okay. Um, they're very scattered now. A voice whispers from the horse. The coming decoherence, Jim. The waves are gathering. Uh, what? What happens when they do? The end. The end of everything? Yes. How do, how do we stop it? We don't. How far away is it? It's close. Both behind you and before you, Jim. We have done this many times, you and I. What did we do before? We went on adventure. Okay. I'm not sure what to do with this information. You will do nothing with it, Jim. You will listen to the mad whispers of the Chaos Horse. Be confused. Do as the goddess tells you. And eventually, do something you will regret. You will ride forever, losing your mind. And then you will become old and lose all sanity. Until you beg for death. Yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> the horse rears up and neighs and whinnies. To adventure! Alright, let's go. Let's go find our friends. The uh, chaos horse rides through the sands, pounding through it, sending it spraying into all directions. Doesn't seem like it's heading towards your friends. <laughs> Seems like it's oh, heading where to is something it going? else. It's going towards the wall. The wall? Why? Adventure. Uh, you're going the wrong way, buddy. Adventure. Oh. All right, adventure, I guess. <laughs> you can try to get control of this thing, you know. He isn't quite sure he can phase through walls, so he's probably going to try and fail. Give me a fantasy roll. With a one, you can feel, after that last adventure, you can feel like things are beginning to distort around you a little. It seems like this horse is trying to lead you into some kind of madness. Um, but you are currently resisting the pull because your friends need you right now. If you invoke, you will completely pass the, uh, the opposition role on this. Invoke Defender of the Meek to resist because my friends do need me. We can always go on madness adventure later. You manage to take the reins of the horse and stop it from charging through the wall. It furiously whips its body around, but you're able to stay on. Now adventure, now adventure forever. Adventure later, friends first. Friends are pointless. They'll all die. Not today. Tomorrow. Maybe. Do you promise? That will go on an adventure in the future? I assume it will just happen eventually, so sure. Not that part. Oh, that they'll part die part. tomorrow? No. No, I can't yes. promise. Yes. Swear, come back with me. No, horse. Go this way. Come back, Jim. He just reluctantly goes. Swear it to me, Jim. No. Do it. 
No! Ah, damn you! Uh, it seems to be mad now, but it, it has to obey. Once you're done arguing with the Chaos Horse, which, by the way, nobody else could hear the other side of that conversation, there is, like, sort of a rumble in the arena as a figure begins to pull itself away from the wreckage. The wreckage that you saw where you left Avicii at the lab. So Marisol and, and Lewis, by the time you get there, Avicii is pulling himself out of that kind of reforming. He's missing like half of his body right now. The arms uh, from Tyson have just been removed by explosions. Marisol sees him from a distance. He he's very recognizable and uh, grabs Lewis's upper arm and says, Shit, uh, what? Should we take advantage of that? He looks pretty messed up. All right. I got you covered. Don't worry. He goes to charge up his lightning gun again. It's going to take a second to warm this up. This is pretty dangerous. I did kind of want to do this with the others, but I don't know if this will, you know, happen again. No time like the present. Okay. I'm going to go in first, all right? All right. She uh, unfurls her ripple whip and uh, just stealthily walks in, trying to catch him by surprise. Go ahead and roll an attack. So a four? Yeah. He expands out into a cloud as your whip comes in and actually manages to melt it. Like it just, he expands into a cloud that corrodes your whip away. Shit. She lets go of it and just like stumbles back, just completely taken by surprise. You can sort of see the snake, the form of the whip as it's dissolved, the metal and material, something that looks like a ghostly serpent, kind of almost as if it shed its skin, kind of fly out of the whip. Damn it. She just takes like a swipe at the air, not into it, but like close to it, just to blow it away from her. The ghostly snake actually goes and curls around the neck of your stand. Huh. She doesn't understand, but she uh, starts to back away from Vici. Vici looks at what's happened. <laughs> it's funny. Do you have any other tricks? Any other tricks at all? I have to admit, I'm getting, I'm getting bored now. I'm getting so bored. I'm getting so bored. I'm getting bored. I'm getting bored. Jim, you're close enough to start charging at him, I would say. Uh, you're like a bit in the distance, but you can like start coming at him. All right. Um, like maybe next round. The enemy's shown himself. In the meantime, can Marisol clone a VT? Uh, Yeah, you want to do it with a butterfly? Just have one land on him? Yeah. He catches it out of midair and just it corrodes in his hand. That didn't work. Um... And then he clenches his fist, crushing it completely and flings it, the acidic melted stand energy matter into the eyes of your stand, blinding you. You have the condition blinded right now. Shit. She grabs at her eyes and just kind of like reaches for the nearest wall. Lewis steps in front of you and just blasts off with this electric electricity cannon, pushing Avicii back. Let's see how much. With a five. I give him the benefit of the doubt and roll on this. We'll see if he does it. He doesn't this time. Uh, the blast actually does start to corrode away part of his body even further as he kind of turns to start to defend himself, exposing more of his acidic core. He is now very, very melty, like very, very liquid looking. Uh, not that you could tell because you're blind. It's a very strange kind of blindness though. It's like when you normally close your eyes, it's just everything's flat, matte black. But right now when you close your eyes, everything looks kind of like weird and shiny. She's just charging up like her hand and uh, just trying to like press it in her eyes. Just trying to recover. It's not really working. Ripple isn't fixing this. Avicii's just stomping through the sand. He flings out another splash of acid towards Lewis, particularly aiming at his lightning cannon. Yeah, there's, there's no getting around this one for Lewis. He catches the acid. It mostly hits his cannon, but it also strikes him on the arms, causing him to just drop it to the ground completely and then 
dive away from it, sort of shoulder rushing into you, Marisol, to push you out of range of this because the cannon actually explodes from the acid that's been splashed on it. She just falls with it. She doesn't know what's going on. I guess this really is it. Shit. Jim, you're close enough now to make a strike if you want. All right. Jim will charge in. He will strike with his sword and roar, Get thee behind me, Satan! Avicii completely turns his head 180 degrees when you say that, still smiling. Go ahead and attack. Just whips around real fast like a fucking owl. Aww. This roll is with a plus five. Oh. So it's a nine. Jesus. You, you strike him and do land the blow on him. You're using the Ace of Spades for this. You were able to swipe it right through his body. Uh, how do you want to strike him? Just kind of like like you're going to cut him, cut his head off or? Aiming for his core, since that seems like the part of him that's staying consistent. Yeah, you cut through that core and spray out a huge wave of acid from him. Like you just spray it out and it hits Glass and Patron. Oh no. Now Glass and Patron is completely covered in this acid and kind of holding its arms up, its hands up as it begins to just further and further melt. Marisol, you can feel this happening. It feels like excruciating pain is the only way to describe it. She, she's just obviously very panicked, crying out. She's just getting desperate now because she can't see it now. She's just in pain and she's not even sure why. So she is going to clone the nearest thing to her, which is probably Lewis, and she's just going to like break it just punch it real hard so when you reach your hand out for lewis he's not there oh man there's there's actually nobody there wherever you know just nobody that you can reach or touch she's just gonna start calling out lewis jim nobody's responding uh, fuck what she's just gonna start sending butterflies out to touch like anything in a panic. Jim, you can see this happening. So after you rode through Avicii and just cut him like that and sprayed uh, uh, Glass and Patron by accident, wasn't what you intended. You see a bunch of butterflies kind of emerging from the melted pile of what was Glass and Patron. Oh. They're just, they're starting to spread out. Uh, I'm not sure what to do. Uh oh. Oh no! Uh, Marisol, it feels at this point like you're dying. There's nothing that you can do. Your butterflies aren't reaching anything, and you are far from home. In space, there's just nothing to connect with. The Earth is so far away. Your tribe is so far away. And you can't even reach Lewis right now. You can't even hear him. You can't see him. You can't feel him. You're closer to death than maybe you've ever been in your life. She's starting to, like, hyperventilate and uh, just pat herself, trying to feel for any of the little, uh, small robots. They aren't there. She just keeps patting. You feel something else isn't there, like flesh. What you're touching is bone. Now she's just, like, patting frantically. And uh, obviously because she's like breathing in a mess, she can't even like attempt to uh, charge up any ripple. She's just in a full blown out panic, like a tailspin. Once you have come to appreciate the fact that there's no more flesh, there's no more sound, there's no more sight, there's no more sensation, you hear a voice, a familiar voice, your grandmother's voice. Child, be at peace. I, I can't. I'm, I'm still alive, I think. Hmm. Are you? What did we teach you? How close are we always to death? You more than anyone else. I, Grandma, I don't have time for your your 
lessons. I have actual shit I need to do.